Hey everybody, glad you could make it found the video here. Well, this is video 11, and I would say it's basically the end of the road. But what I'll be doing is probably a six month and a year update, let you know how things are going as far as the dome goes, any cracks, any additions, and stuff like that. I'll, I'll keep you updated. I want to thank everybody that hung in there. Yeah, we've gained a couple of new uh, uh, subscribers. Hey, welcome to the channel. We do all kinds of things here. Building, cooking, guns, you name it. Alright. So, what I want to do right now is, is go over uh, is everything done? Uh, what didn't I show? Uh, what would I do different? And then go over the cost. All right. Very few people go over the cost, and I'm going to do it in great detail. Now, I didn't realize that the cost here and the cost where you are may be slightly different, but at least it'll give you a, 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 a nuke range of whether or not you want to get involved in this thing. All right. So is everything done? Well, we cooked two meals on it. Should be done, right? No, nah, everything's not done. Um, it could be, but it's not. What do I mean by could be, but it's not? First of all, the walls that support the, the, uh, the dome itself and the two upper pads, I want to parge those, and then I want to seal them. All right? I want to make them as waterproof as I can. So I've got some parging to do. No big deal. Mix it up in a wheelbarrow. Whoop it on, smooth it off with a sponge and everything, and once it's dried a couple of days, get in there and spray it with some sealer and be good to go. I need to, uh, you've seen in one of the couple of the videos the, where the wood is stored, and right now it's open, and today it's raining, so I know there's some water blowing in, so I want to build a door and just put a door on there, no big deal. That's putting some 4 by 4 together, putting some... Uh, plywood on there, painting the dickens out of it, trying to make it a little bit waterproof at least, and uh, we'll be done, okay? And I want to build what I'm going to call a toolbox. And I don't mean for my wrenches and, and uh, air nailers and things like that. What I mean is I want to, on the front, up, up underneath where that ledge comes out, is cantilevered, I want to get a good solid piece of wood, hardwood, and um, put a big glob of uh, JB Weld in the, each end and in the middle and push it up into that thing and let it set for a couple of days. Why? Because what I want to do is come up underneath there and screw in kind of like a, a cabinet. Okay? And in that cabinet I'll keep all the tools that I need to uh, that will fit in it. Okay. Uh, I'll keep all those tools in that cabinet so that when it comes time to do something, I know where everything is, all right? So, do either of those three absolutely have to be done? No, not really. Uh, I mean, if, you're, if I was really super short on uh, funds and things and time or whatever, I could put them off for a while or not do them at all and it wouldn't affect the cooking. But it's just things that I want to do I think will, will be beneficial. What, was there anything I really didn't show? Uh, there's only one thing that came to mind. I've been sitting down for the last few hours trying to think about what didn't I show. Well obviously I had to cut a lot of stuff out of, of the videos and everything. And, and again, I'm sorry, I'm no Steven Spielberg. and. You know, I, I'd like to say that camera's older than Methuselah, but it's not. I had to get a new camera, as you know. And uh, I'm still trying to get the hang of that, uh, that video program. Man, that's kicking my butt still. Like I said, I just found out in the last video that I uh, put up there about the cooking that uh, you could filter out some background noise. And the most background noise that I usually have is uh, I forget to turn my radio off, okay? I've been building since I was 10 years old and I've always had a radio and it's kind of like white noise. I, it's just there. All right, so um, one of the things that uh, I didn't show that I can come up with is sealing the outside of the dome. All right, once I got everything done, once I got the faux uh, brick on there and put the mortar in between, you know, the, the bricks and all that, smoothed it out. 
Uh, I let it sit a few days and then I went out and I got some brick and mortar sealer. Uh, I got back up on the scaffolding, had it in a bottle, bought a gallon of it. I didn't know if it was going to be enough or not. Actually, I bought two gallons and I ended up taking one back. Uh, and, and I just sprayed it with a spray bottle and I had this big paintbrush that I would work it in. So spray work, spray work, spray work, spray work. And obviously the whole idea of that is to keep water from getting in there and everything. Since, as you can tell, it's right under that roof of the pergola and water comes right off the boom onto it. Uh, one thing I have done is, is uh, um, Lowe's was having a sale on uh, big covers for smokers. And uh, they were like 20 bucks is all they were, 19.99, 20 bucks. So uh, I not only bought one, I bought two because of my, my, my old Weber, that cover's gone to, you know, wearing a hand basket. It's, it's all ripped up and in bad shape. Um, so I'll be covering the, uh, the dome as well uh, during the winter time, things like that. All right. But what the sealer does is it keeps water and moisture from getting in and, and working its way into the mortar mix and all that. Now what would I do different? <laughs> other than say, heck no, I ain't doing this project, dang near kill me. Um, well, one of the first things I'd do is not build the dome itself. I would not build it as high. All right. I think it's uh, much higher than it needs to be. And what that equates out to is eating more wood. And that bad boy can eat some wood, believe me. Um, I think I'd come down four to six inches because I've got it at, I believe, 18 and a quarter. All right, so I, it's sitting right at 18. And I think I could get by with, uh, you know, I don't want to say 12, 14 sounds more like it. So I think I'd go down to about 14 inches. And one of the things that that would obviously do for me is save on wood. And it would also save on the number of fire bricks that I needed. Luckily, fire bricks wasn't a problem to get. But, you know, if I could drop off 20 fire bricks was about what I would save, then I, that's 20 fire bricks I would not have had to purchase. Uh, it's about 40 bucks because they were two bucks a piece. Don't count tax. So the dome's too high. I would lower the dome a bit. The next thing is the pad's too high. And when we got to, uh, again, we, the southern we, when I got to the eighth layer of the block going up, I, I really stood, I mean, my neighbors thought I was crazy standing there. I'd stand out there for I don't know how long and just look at that. Do I want to go up? Do I not want to go up? Do I want to go up? Do I not want to go up? Had a stick playing like I was doing something in there. They, my neighbors thought I was oh, on wacky juice or something, but uh, I was trying my best to figure it out. And I thought, well... If I make it too low, that means there's nothing I can do but bend over. That sometimes is not a good thing for me. If I make it too high, worst case I'd have to do is build me a little platform stand on. So, you know, that's pretty simple. I went and put it up the extra block. What I wished I had done, I uh, wished I'd known more about blocks, and I wish I'd gotten one of the solid half blocks and put that around, which would only gone up four inches instead of the full eight, and that would have made things a little bit better. Has it been a problem? The only time that it's been a problem for me is if you saw when I was trying to pour that dead gum uh, 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 gravy that I had made, okay, from where the uh, spatchcock chicken was in, all right, and I deglazed it with the wine and put the uh, chicken chicken uh, juice in there and all that other stuff. Um, that was a little tough kind of pouring it. I could have saved myself a lot of trouble by taking it and going over and putting it on my work table and taking it over and poured it there. Alright, thought about that later. But, uh, you know, I'm trying to stay in front of the camera and show you guys as much as possible. So, but still, I, I think I would like it about four inches lower. I think eight would be too much, but I think four would be just fine. Alright, so dome's too high, come down about four inches. Pads are too high, come down about four inches. And the next thing is, I think I would have been much better off staying, even though I love the appearance. 
I love my faux tile out there. I think it looks good. And I think working the way I did with that uh, mortar mix around in there and making it, it looks almost like an adobe style thing, you know what I mean? Um, I, I wouldn't, next time, I wouldn't go with, with the faux tile because, not me, uh, I can't keep a square corner apparently. <laughs> and I don't think if I built another one, I could do any better keeping a square corner. You heard me say in one of the videos, create a two inch plug, stick it up there, work some stuff around it. I don't know. I, I, I would be worried about that plug actually being connected very well. All right, so I, I don't know. But uh, uh, if I was gonna push it in, pushing it being the perlite or the vermiculite, whichever one end of the chicken wire and build it up. And if I couldn't keep a square corner, my original idea was, in case you don't remember, was to use decorative rock. That's what, like eight bucks or eight bucks or less a bag, okay? And I could get and buy with three bags uh, that for eighteen six, you know, times three eighteen. Whereas you're gonna find out, well, I paid over two hundred bucks for the, them tiles, so I could have done a significant savings there. All right. Plus, what you you know, the whole idea was you get the dome up, you put the, a, a good, good coat of, uh, of mortar on there, and then you just hand press in some rocks, a little bit more mortar mix over that, work it away, work it away, work it away, give it a couple of, I don't know how long, you got to be careful about that, and then go over it with a wet sponge, and they have those orange rocks. I think that would look, I think that would look very nice, very nice indeed. But next time if one of my neighbors want to do that it's up to them all right so but i if i'm going to build if that thing ever falls over that's uh, probably the end of it i'll buy me one of them ono things or oni or whatever they are um but uh no more faux tile all right let's get into the cost buckle up i've got these down in alphabetical order here only because i had them on a spreadsheet and everything like that all right so uh, you remember in the front I did that aluminum trim around my tile because I didn't know a 12 inch tile wasn't 12 inches. Duh. <laughs> you learn something new every day. So I had that big gap and everything. So I put that tile on, uh, that aluminum trim around there. Okay. Uh, that was 48 bucks. Uh, four, four, uh, four foot strips of that was uh, 48 bucks. I bought some bolts for the oven door that you saw on there that actually had the door on there. And that's something else I haven't completed. I'm, I'm going to work on there and probably put that second uh, um, tray that I have. Uh, I'm going to get it way up. In fact, what I'm going to try and do is see if I can find me some rigid insulation. I'm going to go down to that store where I bought my rock wool, see if they have some kind of rigid insulation put between the door and that, that thing, see if it'll protect it. But anyway, the bolts, they only cost five bucks. I did not buy them at Lowe's. <laughs> We're going to talk about Lowe's here in a minute. All right. Um, I only paid five bucks for them. If you do go to Lowe's, Home Depot, and most other places, you're going to pay, here's a bolt, that's a buck, here's a bolt, that's a buck, here's a bolt, and here's a nut. You're going to pay individually for everything, and the price gets up there real fast, believe me. Um, I went to TSC. And if you have no clue what TSC is, it stands for Tractor Supply Company, okay? We have those down here in the south. I don't know if you have them in your area, but we have something called TSC, Tractor Supply Company. And you just get all your stuff, as long as it's stainless steel in one pile, or if you're going to do galvanized, put that in another pile, don't mix them together. They weigh them. So I took all them nuts, all them bolts, all them washers, all them lock washers, put them all in the same bag, gave me the lady, she put them up there and go, okay, that's five bucks. Significant savings there from TSC. All right, my chicken wire, that was uh, 20 foot of that, 40 bucks. No big deal, 40 bucks. All right, hang on here, sports fans. That decorative veneer, that decorative veneer ran to me $267. There's $267 right there if you don't use it that you can save yourself. All right, so when I give you the final thing, subtract 267 or anything else you see on here. Maybe you want to subtract that aluminum trim. That's 48. We're over $300 right there you could subtract. You know, it's up to you. Um, but I'm happy with what I got. 
All right, so that, that decorative veneer was $267, and it took four boxes. The lady swore when she sold it to me it'd only take three. Uh-uh. It took four, and I only had four tiles left over. All right, the decorative veneer sealer, all right, that veneer sealer was one gallon. In fact, I bought two, but I took one back, so I subtracted that off. Uh, and, in fact, it didn't take a whole gallon. That, that, that's what you're going to shoot on the, uh, the uh, faux tile and the mortar, you know, in between and all that. That cost 27 bucks. Not too bad, 27 bucks. You know, I got up on scaffolding, I had it in a spray bottle, then I'd get the big uh, paintbrush, work it in and everything, spray, work, spray, work, spray, work, and do the whole thing. I gave it like two hours to dry, and I went up to do a second coat, sprayed it, and it just ran down. So that first coat was working pretty good. So I figure every six months I'll get out there and try and seal it again just, just to see because we get a lot of rain and like I said, it's right under the edge of that roof even though I'm going to have a, uh, a, a smoker cover over it just to take care of it. Alright, what else we got? We had to buy us a diamond tooth cutter. Well, what, why did we have to buy a diamond tooth cutter? Because that's what we cut our tiles with. Yeah, any anything like the bricks, the tiles, anything like that at all, you had to have a diamond cutter. Uh, okay, the, one of them uh, things that you use to cut rebar, even though rebar is harder to get out, no, it, it just ripped the tile up. It wouldn't do a clean job of it. And that bad boy came in at $32. All right, I bought me some door hinges because I know I'm going to put me a door on there. And I got a whole set of door hinges, three hinges, and all the apparatus I need to screw them in. And I paid 10 bucks for that. That's all. Believe it or not. Um, all right, here we go. Fire bricks. I bought uh, $355.98. That's $355.98. So if I'd only gone up, say, 14 inches instead of 18, then needless to say, I could have saved myself about 20, 20 some odd bricks right there. But that's okay. I think it took uh, somewhere around 170. Somewhere between Winston. Well, I divided that by two. They were two bucks a thing, and then you had tax. All right. Um, brick cutter, like I said, 32. Uh, fire mortar mix. All right. I'm sorry, Lowe's. I'm just going to tell on you. If you remember the story, there was only one place that sold the high speed, high temp, 2300 degree mortar mix. All right. And that was one store at Lowe's owned. And the reason it was at that particular Lowe's is it was two blocks from their headquarters. And man, you walk into that store, you got 20 people asking you, can I help you? Can I help you? Can I help you? And you walk in the store down here, you know, and you, you, you hear the blue, blue, and there goes the old uh, uh, um, tumbleweeds, man. You don't get no help. Or, you know where something, something is? Yeah, I think it's over there. All right, so. That was $450 for six bags. Now I bought 12. I went back again later on, if you remember, and I bought six more for 450 bucks. So I took it up to this Lowe's locally, tried to turn it in. Trade, you know. They said, no, you can't do that. I go, well, why not? They said, well, you didn't buy it here. I said, now wait a minute, I called Charlotte, talked to their manager, and the manager, which is two blocks from your headquarters, said, sure, yeah, you can take it back there. So I'm just taking it back here. You tell me I can't take it back here? That's fine and dandy. I want to see a manager so that when I, when I go up to, to Charlotte, drive all the way up there, I can give them the manager's name that told me to go pound sand. And, well, she said, well, let me see your driver's license. I go, oh, okay. But, you know, then she gave me 14 more reasons why she couldn't take it back. Well, okay, well, if you're not going to take it back, why do you need my driver's license? Then she finally said, sign here. Go, what? What's going on? Sign here. We're going to take it back. And I look down the sign and I go, well, wait a minute. That's not what I paid for. I paid more. They charged me $60 to take back the mortar mix. Now I stood there and thank goodness and believe it or not I'm pretty pretty good with math in my head three hour drive three hours plus depending upon traffic up three hours plus back okay 
So that's going to be a little bit more than $60 gas in any of my two trucks. So I said, okay, I'll do this. So thank you, Lowe's, for your support. I appreciate that. 60 bucks you got off of me. All right. Yeah, I ain't happy. All right, so what else we got? We got some insulation. Uh, all that rock roll we got was six big pieces and everything. That was 32 bucks. We bought perlite. Six large 20-pound bags of perlite at $114. And we used all six of them. But remember that guy went out of... He decided to close the store down, so I had to go hunting. We bought some Portland cement. Okay, we bought about six bags. And whatever, however many, it was 108 bucks. We bought some rebar. We bought 15 uh, pieces at 10 foot. That was 74 bucks. We bought a rebar cutter. Now, a rebar cutter is nothing more than one of them stone things that spins on your uh, uh, angle grinder and cuts rebar just like butter. It was really nice. They're only four bucks a piece, so I bought two. That was eight bucks. All right, sackcrete. I bought thirty. 54 bags of sackcrete and used every dang one of them. All right, and that was 177 bucks. Bought about two bags. Actually, I bought a couple more bags of sand than two, um, but uh, 28 bucks. I think sand was like uh, I don't know, six, seven bucks a bag or something like that. I just didn't change the bag number. I changed the the price when I put it down here. Stone for draining. Remember when I did? I showed you the pictures because I, I went, didn't have, didn't do a video. I wasn't doing a video at that time. When you put the pad on on the ground in North Carolina, you need to put some stone there because we have very wet weather. It's raining today, like I said. All right, and you don't want water accumulating up underneath there. You want to try and keep it on stone, even though some water is going to accumulate. All right, I bought ten bags of that at forty bucks. See, forty bucks for ten bags. So I could have bought three bags of decorative stone, which is the orangey type stone, you know, probably for 24 bucks and saved a whole bunch of money. Yeah, I didn't even have, if you don't want to buy stone, you can on your last coat smooth it out with a, uh, 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 a sponge and some water and uh, seal it, leave it the same color or paint it, whatever. All right, tile sealer. The tile sealer is for the front tile, this tile sealer, okay? Don't confuse it with the faux tile sealer. This is a different kind of sealer for the tile that's on the shelves in the front, all right? That was 20 bucks. Uh, tools, I had to buy me some tools. I didn't, I didn't have any, any of the tools, I mean, to work with on this stuff, so I spent 80 bucks. You, you got tools, uh, you don't have to spend that. All right, wall walk. Obviously, I'm about the only Yahoo here that had to go up nine courses. You will probably go up four or five courses, okay? Put your, put your pad and that'll be it. So you will not need, <coughs> excuse me, half as much block as I did. And my wall block came in at that much even. It was only $186, which I thought wasn't too bad. $186. Wall block mortar. That was five each at 80 pound bags, only $37. So the mortar and the, and, and the box, that, you know, that didn't break the bank too bad. <laughs> wood. I spent uh, close to $100. I spent $84 for wood to, to build forms, and I ended up even using some that I already had on hand. All right. Now I've got a category here I call forgotten costs. Forgotten costs is just basically I bought something, forgot to put the dadgum thing down and everything, and by the time I think about it, it's probably about somewhere between 150, 200. So I worst cased it and put down 200. All right. So for all you math geniuses, you already know. Everybody else like me that had to, you know, do some calculating on everything there. That bad boy came in somewhere around 2,000. $2,536.98. dollars and ninety-eight cents. So we might as well say two thousand five hundred thirty-seven. And right off the bat, if you don't do that decorative tile, uh, you say the uh, a buttload right there. All right. So um, won't cheat. 
And that's why I said right off the bat, I'm not building this just to do pizzas, not by any means whatsoever. And uh, I think if, if I had lowered it, so let's say one of my neighbors wants one, I'm going to recommend don't, don't go as high as I did. Um, uh, go lower, that way you'll burn less fuel. Because uh, it takes, it, it, that bad boy burns some wood. And I can get, you know the big things uh, that they put refrigerators on and, and haul them around, got two wheels? I forget what they're called, okay? I can buy one of those loaded up with lumber for about uh, $25. So I can fill my wood entire wood case thing up for under $75. That's not bad. I, I don't think that's too bad, but but again, we're we're from a woody area, you know. We're from the Piedmont, North Carolina, um, so it's it's it wood is available. There's a couple of sources. Uh, that's going to be a hard thing for some of you city slickers out there um, to to get wood and stuff like that. And I I can guarantee you, if if I lived in Raleigh, North Carolina, I don't want to tell you what wood would be costing. All right. <laughs> Lord, I had to put the old lady out on the block for a couple of weeks, and man, they'd be upset when I come in with a big bag of quarters. So, was it a fun project? Yeah, I'm glad. Did I, am I glad I did it? Yeah, I'm glad I did it. We're having a ball with it. A uh, lot of learning curve. I mean, everything from uh, you know doing the pieces. Like I said, I don't care if they're perfectly round or not. They ain't going in the septic tank round, so you know, big deal. Um, was the uh, the main meal? Oh man, that that main meal was that was that was outstanding. That that was really good. The only thing that I'd do different next time is uh, maybe it's because my floor was too hot. Maybe it's because I was using a cast iron stove. I don't know what. I don't know why. But my chicken stuck in a couple of places. So I think next time instead of laying it on the floor and then laying the vegetables around them, the mirfoil. I think I'd lay the mirfoil down first and lay the chickens right down on top of that. So if something sticks to the floor, it ain't going to be the chickens, it's going to be the veggies. And they're sacrificial anyway. You, you don't really eat those things. You use them for the gravy or you just don't use them at all, okay? Uh, and in fact, that gravy really didn't turn it. That was the only thing that didn't come out too well. And that was because some of the veggies were burnt and the taste got into the gravy itself. Eh, no big deal. But everything else, them onions, oh, onions, I miss, I miss you, Mr. Justin. All right, so there we go. End of the project, almost. We'll give you some updates. And for you guys that stayed with me all the way through, I really appreciate it. For you guys that have just signed up as new subscribers, what's in the future? Well, what's in the future is uh, uh, I'm going to show you how to do a brisket the way I do it. And you, uh, you don't even have to have a smoker. Uh, we're going to go back to some guns. I'm going to do a, a video on uh, reciprocating charging handles and non-reciprocating charging handles. Which one will bite you? Uh, we're we're going to do that. Uh, uh, we're going to talk about uh, the two types of ammunition that I think every uh, homeowner should have. Uh, and these kinds of things. We're, we're all over the spectrum out there. Food, guns, building. That, that's what we do. All right. But thank you for joining us. Hang in there. Um, it's uh, hope you have a happy Thanksgiving and a Merry Christmas. We can say Merry Christmas in this house. All right. And uh, stay with us. Keep subscribing. If you, ain't, if you ain't subscribing yet, go ahead and subscribe. Take care, everybody. Not the end of the project. We'll give you some updates.